Hello, everyone. Wow, it's really exciting for me to be here. And, and yeah, my name is Nicolo Pera. I am co-founder of Playo. And our company is around seven and a half years old. And if I think back eight years ago, actually before um, we started Playo with my co-founder, Jeppe, uh, I remember one day sitting in uh, my living room and we, we, we make each other a promise and we said, whatever thing we're going to do together, whatever we want to start, whatever is the idea, the product, let's promise each other that we want to do something. First thing we are proud of, proud of as a company, the product that we do, the type of healthy um, organization that we want to build. But also, like, let's promise each other that Every day when we wake up, we want to go to work and be happy. Almost every day. Almost every day. And that's what we've been doing. We, uh, we, we started a company, we started to um, um, uh, work on the deal, work on the products. And when we started to hire our first employees, we held each other uh, accountable for that. And we still do it. And as is been presented, our company is a fintech. We have credit cards. We um, uh, allow um, our customers that are businesses in order they can do uh, invoices, on uh, run invoices on our platform. But also, um, in doing that, in creating the product that can support all the use cases of a small organization up to a 500 plus employees organization and support uh, the experience of everyone that has a Playo app and a Playo card, but also the experience of a CFO that needs to have a peace of mind about what's been spent in my organization, who is doing what, and also like that everything that gets spent in, uh, in, in Playo also needs to be reconciled uh, in uh, an accounting system. It also need, needs to be filed to the tax authority. Uh, there has been a lot of work in in the background, and the company has been growing quite a lot. We've been now uh, serving 12 countries. We have offices in uh, seven um, uh, capitals. We have employees around the world, and we grew a lot in order to serve our customers and give them the best, uh, the best experience. And if now I look back seven and a half years, I can see that our company culture has changed quite a lot. And that is the way it is. Uh, the company culture changes all the time, actually changes every day. It's a very dynamic thing. And of course, like when you start the company and when you have you know, a handful of employees and you are the one running the whole hiring process or you are the one sitting at the stand-up every day, it's something that you can see daily and control. And of course, more and more the company grows more realize that the, the culture is changing in a very dynamic way. And the beauty of it is actually it is changing, and it's a good thing. Because if I think about the culture that Yep and I had in a co-working space uh, on the first days, I feel that what our culture was catering towards it's quite different than the company that we are right now, 850 people spread around the world. Um, so the culture changes, uh, but what you want to look at and what you actually want to focus is that you want the culture to evolve. You as a company, you as a leader, and also your company is getting more mature. It's handling more and more complex environment and more different type of customers and then therefore you need to hire different people. So in the same way as your company is evolving as, uh, um, as an organization, of course the culture has to evolve. And the, cult the culture evolves and it takes quite a lot of work as you as a co-founder but also for the leaders, every employee, to actually nurture it and make it grow in the way we want. And that's actually what this all, what is all about. It is 
as a boat that gets bigger and bigger. That's your organization. And what you want to, to do, you want to steer it in the best possible way towards something that you're proud of, someone, something that makes you happy to go to work every day. And as a boat, the bigger it gets, the harder it gets, actually gets to steer. You, you have a small organization where actually it takes a couple of one-on-ones with, uh, with your colleagues around you to actually discuss a hard topic. If you have an organization that gets in the hundreds, then you need to be much more proactive about how do you want to address its culture or how do we want to address its day-to-day -day events. And myself, my co-founder, Jeppe, our leadership, everyone in the organization has a role in to stay in the culture. And we make it very clear and explicit in our organization to say, like, this is an active role. And it's an active role for a reason, because as everything in the universe, also culture in a company, actually tends to entropy. And the reason why it does so, well, first thing is actually culture itself has been an excuse for centuries for humanity in order actually to divide people more than actually unite them. But also, like, a complexity of culture is that something that is so intangible. And in, in a situation where the organization grows so much and there is so much uncertainty about what is happening, um, there is a tendency of people, employees, to, uh, to use culture or like, this is not company culture or this is company culture as a way actually to, um, to divide actually more than build, uh, to build upon. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of painting, you know, a bit of a gloomy picture about, you know, like there is a culture, it's changing quite a lot. If you don't do anything about it, it's actually going to go quite south. But fortunately, there is actually a way to hold yourself accountable to what you want your culture to be. And this is through your values. So first thing, what are, what are values? Uh, let's start actually with Pleo values. Uh, Pleo values is trust. It is uh, um, um, being human, it is entrep um, entrepreneurship, and it is transparency. Each one of those values is quite loaded, and it actually takes quite a bit in, in order to explain what exactly means. But it is at least for everyone in the company, in the organization, it is a no start, something to actually aim, aim to. And if you know your values, if you understand what it means, what this value means in general, but also what it means in the company, in the state where it is now, well, then actually what you can do, you can run your company using them around them. So I make an example, like, um, let's say that, um, okay, a person comes to me and say like, look, Nico, I'm a bit concerned about this because we have this release and they're really pushing about having this release happen next week. And this means that probably like the team will have to work, let's say, in, um, in the weekend. And uh, this, is, this is, I guess, our, uh, our culture. And then like, as a leader, as a coworker, then you can think, okay, like, what, what is our culture? Okay, let, what, what are our values? And our values have, for sure, being human, so it means like I'm open about the way I feel, my feelings, and also like the fact that as a human being, I have my limitations. Like, am I being close to go uh, burnout, or like, am I getting pushed so much towards uh, you know th this deadline, and this is stressing me? That is something. Uh, but it is also like the, uh, the value of trust. Am I actually trust trusted to take the right decision about um, if this should happen? throughout the weekend, or even like if this deadline should happen that exact day. And then there is like another values, that is uh, entrepreneurship, when I feel, okay, why are we having this deadline this day? Is, what is the effect that what we are releasing uh, towards um, our customers? What, what are we doing in order to solve uh, a challenge them? But for example, they have, actually they have a bug, it is the bug that is in production that it affected them. And the sum of, uh, uh, of those values 
is able to actually give us an understanding of if this is something that we should do or something that we should actually stop, that maybe we should not have that release that day. And again, like, this is just a small example, but this happens all the time, and it should happen all the time to everything that you do in your, organiz in, in your organization. You have a meeting, and you take a decision in this meeting. Well, how was this decision taken? Is it a decision that uh, fulfills our value, or is something that actually doesn't? I know it sounds quite complex, and actually it is, but for us, that we care so much about how we want our company to be right now, but also to become, it is a daily constant work into looking around what's happening around us, what we can feel, what we can hear, what uh, is the feedback that we get, and try to understand, is this run in our values? And this happens for things that are uh, the day-to-day -day for happy events, happy moments, and also hard events. Everything should run around them. And when you think about all the initiatives that happen in an organization, when you have like 50 people, 100 people, 200, 300, 500, you realize there is just so much that happens around you. And on top of that, and that has been the, um, uh, the past year in Playo, when you had so many new people to the organization, and in our case, in, in 2022, we hired more than 50% of our organization, so now we are at 150, you also can realize and think like, how much change are you bringing to your day-to-day -day life, but also in general to the organization and, and, and its culture? Every single person changes the culture, and if you have at certain in certain months, we hire more than 100 people. If you have 100 people at the same time that join that organization, what is going to be the impact that they're going to give to the company? Is it an impact that you can control? And the, the answer is yes, we think it is possible to actually control this, uh, this impact. Um, and this applies for everyone that you hire, but especially applies for the leaders that you have, or the leaders of leaders, because their role as they hire for is to be multipliers. So they're multipliers and enablers for decisions, for uh, expertise, but they are in the same way also for culture. So the way they're going to run teams, the way, the way they're going to run projects, or um, be the owners of big part of the organization is going to, is going to dramatically impact uh, the way that the culture is shaped. Therefore, in Playo, one of the most important things is actually to evaluate the values of everyone that gets hired. And when I say everyone, I mean everyone. You could be like start as a junior, but still as part of your challenge interview or when you have like a follow-up with your new leader, you actually get evaluated on, uh, on what excites you, what value excites you. And when you speak, when you have an interview with us, and you describe about your passion in life, your past experience in work, that is actually part of the process to try to map what you say and what you discuss with us into our values and see what, uh, um, if, if, you're, if you're ready to rally for, uh, for, for those values. And uh, if you are a leader of a big organization, that actually becomes an interview by itself and what we do in that case, we actually have someone that could be a co-founder, could be a senior leader, a leader from a different area that actually evaluates on players' value. And uh, the moment, hopefully, that you, know, you as a leader, you know, uh, or, uh, or engineer or a marketeer um, um, are, um, are deemed to be uh, um, a great candidate for player and we hire you, then actually, the job doesn't stop, actually the job starts. Because yes, you have this expertise, yes, you're going to bring an impact in Playo. Uh, you seem to be uh, excited and someone that is going to carry our value, values forward, but also we need to make sure that you get also get properly onboarded into the organization. And onboarding goes from, of course, you know, understand the type of business that we have, our challenges, 
and that's fine, and probably you know already uh, about that. But another very important thing that we do in Playo is also that that onboarding itself carries quite explicit uh, presentation about our values, but also in the way it's run, it's a showcase to how values are at Playo. How do uh, embrace, for example, uh, being human, and um, for example, how do we uh, have uh, trust or transparency as our one of our key value? And you actually can touch and have a pro proper, tangible experience about that in your onboarding. On top of that, of course, you know there is support that happens throughout, but for leaders and leaders or leaders. We also have extra onboarding that is actually only catered about that. We have, for example, sessions where myself and the rest of the Lighthouse, our C-suite, actually has a one-hour uh, session where actually each one of us give our own uh, idea, our own opinion of what a great, great company means to us. So, for example, for myself, I speak quite a lot about this, about our values and, and the way we run the company, but as well as other people show how they embody their values into, for example, the area, could be sales or, or, or um, my co-founder, Yep, as a, as a CEO in the strategy. So there is, especially when you join the company, uh, a, a very important uh, setting of what are you expected to do as a, as a manager, and there is also like a quite a, a strong expectation that you, as a leader, have probably tons of experience. You have seen this before, and you know you you know how to run a team, how to grow a team. But there is also an expectation that you don't really know us. You don't really know the team that you're joining. You don't really know um, uh, the challenges that we have, and. And we tried it in the past, and that's why you know, now we, we approach it this way. We, we realize that there is no such a thing as that. That person is so experienced, they will go and figure it out. They will probably do, but what is going to be the cost of that? How much time is actually going to be spent for them to try and fail? What type of situations that the leader will encounter? They will probably break the trust with, with the people, for example, that, uh, that the leader is going to manage. And from the past, we realized that everyone deserves proper onboarding, and leaders of leaders deserve even more time spent with them in order to make sure that their experience and their interaction with the team is the best possible. One thing that we, that we do, for example, for our, for our leaders is that they go for five days to uh, authentic leadership training. And authentic leadership training is, um, gives the opportunity to, to every leader to actually separate for a minute over their professional skill set, their strengths and weaknesses, but actually to get and understand more uh, what happens underneath the professional layer, to understand the way the, they handle relationships with each other, the way that their personal um, could be an uprising, could be past experiences, how that personal feelings actually affect the way they relate with others, and also in the end, the way they work as professional. And uh, I can say myself, I've done it, I've been one of the first ones to do it. it. For me, it's been like a life-changing experience. Because, for example, from, from there, I realized that I actually wanted to do personal therapy to understand more myself. And actually, through personal therapy, I then realized that I have ADHD. And then like, uh, I had the opportunity to actually get in touch to myself and see how having ADHD and not be aware of it was actually affecting people around me. And yeah, this is like, and that's why I'm saying it for you as well, you know, like I'm giving you context, like this is myself and this is also my, my way of being human. I can also say that I forgot my medication in Denmark, and, and today I don't have my ADHD medication, so it's a bit late on, on it. That's, I blame it on it. But in the way I'm like speaking with you, I'm giving you context. I'm giving you context about myself, I'm giving you context about what is the baggage that I'm carrying together with me. I can give you context about 
what are my strengths, what are my weaknesses, how you should read the way and interact to wherever we meet. And I'm doing that because if you don't have that context, you're going to fill those gaps, the things that you don't know, with something that is actually a worry, like, okay, that person is not addressing me in, in this way, or maybe that person is just, you know, doesn't give me the right level of, uh, of attention. And me, I know, yes, I have a DHT, so for me it's actually a bit hard to keep my attention high for a while, but what you can actually think is like, okay, there is maybe something about the way I'm actually interacting with you, or the fact that you don't hold me to a, specific, uh, to a certain level that you want to give me your time. And if we don't give, if you don't give context, if we don't open ourselves, if you're not start being human, if you're not transparent in the way we are, then we start a slippery slope. And the slippery slope is going to create an us versus them attitude. And it's an us versus them everywhere in the organization, and especially the moment you add so many people, you create so many occasion opportunities to people to think us versus them. And you can do it like across teams. You have in, in Playo, for example, we have uh, cross uh, um, uh, competence uh, um, teams. So you can have an engineer sitting together with someone from sales. And yes, they are in a situation where they're getting challenged a bit about their expertise. As an engineer, do I actually know about the sales process? Probably not. That is actually something that is quite challenging me to, to tackle. And you as a salesperson, uh, you probably get to challenge about the product development process. And this is quite something that is complicated, that's something that challenges your status quo, and therefore like, there is a natural tendency to actually start to see the other side as a potential um, enemy or someone that actually is trying to do something that is, is having an impact that is against me. You can have it, you know, in different, uh, different scenarios, you can have it, what I say, like with different expertise and what you bring on the table, but you can also have it if you just have people that are doing the same. Let's say that I'm an engineer into this team and they're thinking about the challenge that I have versus, for example, an engineer that is sitting somewhere else, and maybe like we, we only met once or we never met, so I actually cannot really picture you, who you are and how you are as a person. And then I see that you introduce a bug into my code. And again, if left untreated, your handling of that is going to be, okay, that person is, is, is it's a person that is different from me. That person maybe doesn't have the same attention for quality that I have. And again, you start to divide. And if you think about it, you actually do this all the time. We evaluate each one around us, and we try to understand that this comes from very basic natural needs. We try to understand, okay, are this person a potential challenge for us? Are they a protection? enemy, predator, if you go to the, to, to, to the back into um, into beginning of humanity. And that's what, in the end, we need to cater for. We need to understand that we are all human beings with our feelings, with our baggage that we bring together with you, uh, to, together with us every day. And that's a reason nature and tendency, especially where the company grows so much and there are so many challenges around us and so many things changing about us, that we have a natural tendency about being afraid and skeptical of everything that goes around us. And this starts with awareness, this starts with transparency about this awareness, this starts with a communication to all the company to actually ask for people to be open about their feeling in the way they work every day. It comes from training to everyone in the organization, and especially of the leaders. And also comes with the assumption that while this at times can be quite uncomfortable and painful, this is also a great thing for the company, but also a great, great thing for each one of us. We all have the opportunity to actually grow so much into getting more aware about our strength and our weaknesses, getting more aware about 
the way we think, what is our baggage that we bring every day. And it's really like, you know, that's what I really want to, to, to leave you with, is that change is challenging, change sometimes can be overwhelming, but change is also great, that also what has made us the company that we are, that also is the ambition that has brought so many great people to join this company. And we need to embrace it. We need to embrace change. We probably embrace change more into, in the product that we have or in the way like we, we, we market it to, to others. And that's why we innovate uh, all the time. But also the same change has to happen also inside us as people, as human beings. We need to embrace this change, embrace this awareness and use the values that we have as a company as a way of a North Star, something that is going to help us navigate sometimes the uncertainty or sometimes the challenges. So embrace charge and uh, let your values lead the ways. And uh, thank you so much for your time. Thank you.